Hi there and welcome back to MeTV, the show that is all about you and your community. I'm your host, Monica Platek. Now the Mississauga Marathon happened just a few weeks ago and once again it was a tremendous success. Well, one of the runners actually decided to use his photography talents to show what it's like to be inside the run. To tell us more about this, I'm joined now by P. Marco Veltri, the photographer that went the extra mile. Thanks for being here, Marco. Thanks for having me. So tell me, how long have you been snapping pictures for? Well, I think about 12 or 14 years. Uh, it's been, it's hard to say it's been so long, um, but for the longest time I wasn't taking pictures. Actually, when I was in school for a long time, I took math and sciences, and then in my last year I switched to a photo class and then found that was what I really wanted to do. So tell me more about this idea of Inside the Run with the Mississauga Marathon. Well, this idea kind of came from a different series on dance, believe it or not. It was a series I did of dance out of context. So it was images of dancers in a grocery store, dancers on a bus, and the idea comes from what an artist has to do to get an audience. Does a dancer have to dance for you on your bus ride to work? Does a photographer have to actually run a marathon with his camera for, your, for his work to become relevant? And the answer is yes, they do. Um, basically, it comes from a simpler idea of Every painting and every gallery show that an artist has, every film they make, is basically a marathon and that comparison was important to me. And you've actually ran a few marathons before, haven't you? Uh, in 2003 I actually ran the full marathon in Toronto and I did a few halves and I actually did the half marathon last year um, with, in the Mississauga Marathon, um, but it's uh, back and forth, I don't always run. And it was the first time you were running with your camera. So what was that like? Um, that was actually a really unique experience. I actually came up with the idea, then called the marathon people, and then they agreed to it. And then I started practicing with the camera. And the first few times, I became to think this wasn't possible. Because when you're running, you're sort of in a rhythm, and you're kind of almost meditating. And every time you stop to take a photograph, you're sort of taken out of that. And it becomes almost twice as long when you're running. It's very mentally hard to do. Uh, so eventually what I had to do is stop running with the camera and just wait till the actual race and treat it like an actual photo shoot. So I wasn't thinking I was running a half marathon, I was in a photo shoot where people were running. But at the same time, you definitely were running this yes, half marathon. Yes, it was. It was sort of a psychological <laughs> trick I did on myself to be able to get through it because it wasn't just running the distance. I had to sometimes run back and forth and stop at different places to get the photos that I saw. And what kind of a perspective do you think you were able to bring to the table that was different by being inside the run? Well, the main difference with all sports photography, the problem is everyone's shooting with long telephoto lenses from outside of whatever the event is, and especially for marathons, there really isn't very close-up images. Everything is telephoto images with out-of-focus backgrounds, and you don't really engage the person that's running. You're so far away. In this case, I was running beside the runner and actually talking to them. I first had to introduce myself, tell them what I was doing, and they had this weird look, you know, okay, you're running with a camera, sure. But then afterwards, there's always this instant connection with runners. I found that the same with artists and people who are going through the same type of struggle that they automatically identify with you and there's an instant connection. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at some of your photos. Uh, we actually have 10, but I'm sure you took many more. Yeah. How many did you end up taking? I think I ended up taking about three or 400 images and then um, narrowed them down to about uh, 30 or 40 that I actually show people and there's about 10 on my web page um, but uh, in the end there'll probably be 50 images. Okay so the first one that we're gonna look at right here mm -hmm. it looks like it's a sneaker so you're gonna have to tell me the story behind um, that. That's actually the last image that I took it is unlike the other images actually a little bit set up I actually was you know after the run you have to stop and I just sat down and laid back and that's my point of view I was lying down and I decided to take that shot so I put my medal on top of my shoe and took what I was seeing is I, after the two and a half hours it took me to run with the camera, I was lying down on the ground and uh, looking with my shoe in the foreground at people walking by and I just kind of set this image up. Okay, so that was kind of the last image, the last you, image yeah. you took, okay. So take a look at the next one. Um, this is from, I guess, the beginning of the race where everyone's more bunched up together. Uh, so this is sort of just a lineup of people and it kind of people point out they like this image just because how symmetrical it is. Um, but for me this is more just the introduction to what's going on. Mm -hmm, it's very symmetrical. Did you find that um, you had to keep up to pace with everyone that was running in order to get pictures like this? Uh, well the problem was that I had to keep up with different paces and also one of the tricks of doing something like this is the fact that um, if you're moving and the subject's moving and you're running at different speeds 
things are going to be out of focus no matter what camera you're using or what you're doing. Definitely. So what I had to do, I finally figured it out after several tests, is you actually have to run at the same speed of the person that you're taking the photograph. So that's why I have to go up to them and say hello, how are you, talk to them, figure out what their speed was and try to keep up with them. Sometimes I could and sometimes I couldn't. <laughs> there, there's a lot of running there, I'm sure. Yeah. Now, uh, some friendly folks looking at the, your camera here. Yeah, this is an example of how friendly people were at first. Uh, they you know, they got a little confused by what I was doing, but then they, they just automatically get into it. And uh, this is a, only about the 5K mark, so people aren't delirious just yet. They're just uh, generally full of, uh, full of spirit. And uh, I always stop to take pictures of the people who are smiling. I made a point of that. So. Now, this picture, for example, um, were you taking it over the shoulder? Did you have to turn around to no, take I it? No, I turned around. I kind of sort of developed this, the science of running backwards. So. What I actually had to do is catch up with the person, then speed up, and then run backwards as, as I was taking the photo. You're like a super runner. Uh, running not really. Running backwards, running zigzags. My uh, goodness. Yeah, well, it's, it's not speed. It's just more timing and just waiting for people to be ready for you. Definitely. OK, so the next image we're going to look at. Ooh, nice nature shot. Yeah, and this is one of, the, one of those few images where I actually saw something in a distance, and I actually stopped, found a little frame. So this is something that's. Again, one of the more set up images, but it's more of a postcard like image. Again, I was taking pictures for the marathon images they need later to actually use for their own publicity. So I knew I needed a few shots like this. Um, so this is one of those ones I saw the lighting was, was, you know, was very beautiful, so I stopped and waited for people to be in the right place. And of course, I have probably 10 images of this, but then I ended up picking the one where someone's ponytail is flying up and there's more movement in it. More action. Yeah. And it was a beautiful day. Yeah. It just so happened to be very sunny and perfect. Mm -hmm. It was actually a very perfect day last year when the marathon was very windy and it was very difficult to get through. Um, and at the last part when we got to Lakeshore, the wind was so strong that it was a very, very difficult last five kilometers. And as we were running, the weather got better and it just kept improving. Um, so that really helped. And uh, what changed is where the light was coming from because at the first part of the race, everyone had the side lighting. So it was very dark shadows on people's faces and I didn't take as many photos. But as people were running down Mississauga Road, the light was directly hitting them and, and kind of like studio lighting almost. So I made sure to take even more photos as I was running down Mississauga Road. Mm -hmm. The sunshine was on your side. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at the next image. Um, so this particular image was something that I was looking for before the race. And I had a friend actually have the image of someone running. And just because I didn't think I could get this while I was running because it's more of a close up. And I had to be about three inches away from someone as they were doing this. And who's going to let you do that when they're running? So uh, what's funny about these two group, the group of people in this one, Aaron, as their name's on there, is I first saw them, and they found out what I was doing. And they were, again, confused. But then they were, thought I was really excited when I took a few photos and showed them. And I ran into them about three or four times. So we'll probably see another image of them, that they're shadows or something. So with this image, I'm sort of just trying to capture just motion and an image that you normally don't see as well, just uh, you know, the movement and um, one person in focus in the background. And again, I was maybe an inch from them running backwards with the camera in this particular case. So we shot it maybe four or five times before I was sure that I got it. Let's take a look at the next few images a little faster because we're running out of time here. Now this is you. Yeah, that's the scariest image I had to take, actually. Like, as, as a photographer, you're never in front of the camera. And even now, I don't feel like I'm in the right place. And I felt this was important because it's a point of view series of work. So there had to be an image of me. And so I am literally holding the camera in front of my face and running down the Saga Road, taking there's probably 10 images of me. And this is the one where I guess I felt I looked less silly, but <laughs> still. OK, this is the last picture we'll look at. Okay, so sure. once again, some smiley faces. Yeah, these people I, I ran into a few times. The man on the, le on the right, I guess, is his first half K, uh, half marathon, sorry. and. Uh, he was uh, teasing me the whole way, like, I'm barely getting through this race, and this guy's running with his camera. And uh, again, they're just so friendly and willing to talk to you. And I ran into them at the end, and I even photos of them as they crossed the finish line. Mm -hmm. Just an amazing perspective that you got uh, inside the run in the Mississauga Marathon. But you've actually been all over the world taking pictures, haven't you? Yes, I've uh, traveled a few times. I've uh, been to some places in the States, like San Francisco. And recently, I did a series of work in Rome where I've tried to make it not look like a postcard. So my, I've always tried to make things look like paintings or have a more classic look. But at the same time, while I was in Rome, I was trying not to produce the same postcard images. So there's a series called Alleys of Rome, which I'm actually going to be releasing a book in October of, that what I was trying to do was to make it appear not to be Rome. I was walking around, avoiding all the monuments and you know, the Colosseum and all the statues and fountains. There's no fountain rule. 
And basically, <laughs> when people flip through the photos, they are unsure that it's Rome. Okay, well, as I, you know, I can tell that you always try to get that different perspective, as we saw with Inside the Run, uh, your look at the Mississauga Marathon. So, P. Marco Veltri, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks. And you can check out all of the work, including the Inside the Run, at pmveltri.com. We'll be right back. You're watching MeTV on Rogers Television.